when you thought it was over. was a zero with a gun from my Now It's Personal album. And I wrote that in response to all the people asking questions about why are there these crazy school shootings? Seems like out of nowhere, all of a sudden we have these really psychotic kids just walking into a school and opening fire on everyone. So what happened in the last 40 years that actually changed? Well, when I was going to elementary school in the 50s, Kids could get guns, kids could get knives. Weapons weren't the problem. There was always bullying of one sort or another, so uh, bullying is not the problem. That wouldn't cause somebody to go off the deep end. So what changed? Well, about 40 years ago, these new psychiatric mind-altering drugs called SSRI drugs, serotonin reuptake inhibitor, something like that, look it up, they uh, started to be handing these out to boys, young boys, kind of like candy. It used to be just Ritalin, but all of a sudden it was Prozac, Zoloft, all kinds of drugs. 
And if you look at the side effects written right on the bottle, it says violence and suicide. One would think that if you really wanted to find out the reason behind all these mass killings, you would at least look into this phenomenon. But unfortunately, Big Pharma is making tons of money, and so is the mental health industry. It's much easier to hand out pills wholesale than to actually use the talking therapies, which used to be a lot more prevalent. Now, they just get a list of the symptoms and uh, decide on which drug they're going to give the kid. Also, it's kind of the lazy way out because the drugs don't cure anything any more than an aspirin cures a headache. Aspirins don't cure headaches. They just give you a disability. They attach to your nerve system and make it harder for you to actually feel the pain. So it's, uh, it's a disability. You can no longer feel the pain, but it doesn't cure the headache. Whatever's causing the headache is still there. So you never solve the problem. Same thing with these drugs. Whatever's causing the kids or anyone to have these mental issues is just being covered up. Their emotions are getting dulled down. They're getting a disability rather than finding the actual cause of these problems. You know, the first step in solving a problem is to find the correct statement of the problem. Know exactly what the problem is. If your car is leaking oil, it won't do any good to rotate the tires. But there's an even more nefarious reason that uh, people aren't looking at drugs as being uh, part or all of the problem. There's a political angle to this whole thing. Certain people in governments, not just our government, want to disarm the public because an armed public is not as controllable. And if they ever wanted to uh, turn you into a complete slave as opposed to a uh, partial slave, which you are right now, well, you can't be armed. I mean, this is the first thing any dictator does is make it illegal to have firearms. So right now they're claiming, well, we got to get rid of assault rifles. It's assault rifles. My God, that's the problem. Get rid of those. We don't need to be able to kill mass amounts of people. First of all, they don't even know what an assault rifle is. The AR-15 is not an assault rifle. AR does not stand for assault rifle. It stands for the company that makes it. But it's a slow process of starting with those. And even if they manage to ban those, then they'll be coming for your AR-10s. And there are some people already trying to do away with the Second Amendment entirely. Here's Representative Jim Jordan about a year ago. So last week it was going after parents based on a letter that has been apologized for in a way I frankly haven't seen around this town. This week, Democrats are going to take away law-abiding Americans' Second Amendment rights. Here's what this bill would do. It would deprive individuals, people who have neither been accused nor committed any crime of their firearms without due process of law. By depriving individuals of their property uh, and rights without having been charged, arraigned, or convicted of a crime, this bill violates constitutional due process rights set, set out in the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments. This bill would flip the presumption of due process on its head. The accused person is deprived of the opportunity of defense or the ability to cross-examine the accuser. Individuals faced with an ex parte order would be forced to spend a considerable amount of time and resources on defense without ever being accused of a crime. And if the individual mounts a successful defense, the difficulty of having the seized property return is a huge burden. Think about it. This bill requires a firearm owner to turn over the firearms or sell them within 48 hours. But there's no requirement in the bill for the government to return the firearms once the order expires or is no longer in effect. This means that individuals who seek the return of their property must take independent and expensive legal action to have the property returned by the federal government, the property that was taken in an unconstitutional fashion. More troublingly, this bill is pred predicated simply on the belief of third parties. Your neighbor doesn't like you, will now have a mechanism to get the government to take your Second Amendment rights away, to take your firearms away. This bill is about limiting American Second Amendment liberties. Make no mistake, this bill is all just a pretext for the Democrats to take guns away from law-abiding citizens. Think about this. Democrats defund the police, they label parents as terrorists, and now they're going to take away your firearms without due process. This is frightening. I hope, I hope we don't pass this legislation. I hope you vote no. With that, I yield back the balance of our time. And as tragic as these kind of events are, the press is blowing this whole thing into epidemic proportions, when in actual fact there's over 300 million guns in the United States. 
If this was an epidemic, a problem with guns, you'd be seeing stories like this every week. But I think the most important reason to be armed is what the Second Amendment is really all about. It's not for killing deer in the woods. It's about protecting yourself from a tyrannical government. And yeah, they're going to try to make you sound like you're some sort of a conspiracy nut. But I think the last two years of the pandemic should give you a hint as to what governments are actually capable of pretty much overnight. Take a look at Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the UK, the US, and many other countries. No, it's not about shooting deer. Tucker Carlson puts things very concisely. Here's what he said just a short while ago. So 10 people dead, that seemed like a good pretext to get something you've been calling for for a long time if you're a Washington Democrat. And of course, they wasted no time in using the murders yesterday to begin their latest attempt at disarming you. You didn't commit a crime, but they want you to suffer for what happened yesterday in Boulder. Watch. It's a sad reminder. COVID is not the only epidemic in our country. Uh, we have to confront the devastating, unrelenting epidemic of gun violence that steals thousands of innocent lives across this country. I've already committed to bringing universal background checks legislation to the floor of the Senate. For years, Democrats have pushed for action to stop this killing with common sense reform that will save lives. Now we can act and we will. This hearing, I hope, will open a conversation about constitutional, common sense ways to reduce gun violence in America. Inaction has made this horror completely predictable. Inaction by this Congress makes us complicit. Yeah, people surrounded by armed soldiers are telling you you don't have a right to have a gun because some lunatic in another state committed a senseless crime. Right. Common sense gun reform. They're never more specific. Right now, the only clear legislative path Democrats have to change gun laws in this country would be by eliminating the filibuster and making this officially a one-party state that would change the country forever. For the next two years, Democrats could pass any law they wanted, and as you know, they absolutely would. So far, they've not been able to get rid of the filibuster, but Democrats are already using yesterday's shooting to propose doing just that. And just minutes after the most recent school shooting in Texas, they wasted no time at all making it a political issue. And by the way, the cities and states with the strictest gun control laws are also the cities that have the most violence. And this violence is not committed with AR-15s. It's mostly handguns. So what are they going to do? Just eliminate handguns, of course. But crazy people will always find a way to commit violent acts. In England, just a little while ago, they eliminated all handguns. Nobody in England can own a gun of any sort. So what happened? Killings by knives went through the roof. They were going to try to ban knives, too. The executive director of the National Association of School Resource Officers, Mo Kennedy, told Fox Business that schools are, quote, seeing more aggression in terms of fights. Sometimes they're shoving matches and sometimes they're flat out assaults. It's more misbehavior, thefts and those kinds of things in schools. It didn't used to happen. It's happening now. Why? It's not guns. It's not the gun lobby. More American families had guns at home 50 years ago than they do now. According to the Rand Corporation, which studied this, 45% of American homes had a gun in 1980. In 2016, that had dropped to 32%. So the problem is not that we're more armed than we were. The problem is that people have changed. Young men have changed. They're more violent. Why? There's something really wrong. And we can figure it out if we try. There are probably a lot of causes. The use of antidepressants in this country is increasing dramatically. Between 1991 and 2018, total SSRI consumption increased in the U.S. by more than 3,000 percent. 3,000 percent. Remember, these are supposed to reduce mental illness. Now, that's a real stat. It was published by the medical journal Science of the Total Environment. And it's not just this country. In Canada, state-funded antidepressant prescriptions for young people doubled over the last decade. Then, during the lockdowns, SSRI prescriptions increased even more. A pharmacy group called Express Scripts reported that antidepressant prescriptions went up by more than 20% during COVID. According to the latest figures, more than 40 million Americans are now taking psychoactive drugs. That's roughly one in 10. So again, the point of these drugs is to make you healthier mentally, to reduce suicide and violence. And yet suicide rates and rates of violence are spiking. We don't know that that's causation, but it's worth looking at. 
Of course, it's immoral to criticize big pharma, but could we use an honest conversation about this? Yes, immediately. Clearly something's going on. Guns don't kill people. Psychiatric mind-altering drugs kill people. Hey, I want to invite you all to the premiere of my new single, which is being released on June 10th and on June 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my YouTube channel. I'm going to have the premiere of the new music video. The song is called A Message from Shanghai, and it's a message we all need to know. Most of my listeners already know what's going on, but I wrote this song for the people who don't. So head over to youtube.com slash Neil Fox, Neil with an A, and scroll down a little bit and look for a message from Shanghai. Click on the set reminder button, and uh, hope to see you there June 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss it. I think you'll love it. There's one other aspect to these school shootings. I'm only going to touch lightly upon it now because it really deserves an episode of its own. And that has to do with, uh, well, okay, we're going to go down the rabbit hole just a little bit here. So if this bothers you, just turn down the volume. You know the movie The Manchurian Candidate? Well, that's not phony. That's not just a Hollywood movie. There was a program back in the uh, early 60s called MK Ultra. It was a program by the CIA where they took people, uh, without them knowing, they gave them LSD and they tried to uh, find ways through hypnosis to get these people to do things they wouldn't ordinarily do. Basically turn them into killing machines so they could use them for political assassinations and uh, whatever else they had in their minds. You've seen these mass murderers very often. They have this wild, crazy, drugged up look in their eyes. And you find out that not only are they on psychiatric drugs, but they were under the quote-unquote care of a psychiatrist for a long time. These uh, particular psychiatrists very often are government psychiatrists who are really good at hypnotizing people and drugging them and getting them to perform acts they wouldn't normally do. This is one possible explanation for some of these killings. Maybe for all of these killings. I don't really know. But it's, uh, it's worth a whole nother episode. And I was so excited about getting into this episode that I forgot to mention that I am Neil Fox, a.k.a. Uncle Neil. And you are listening to Uncle Neil's Neighborhood, episode 17. And I'd like to end the show with another song from my Now It's Personal album. This one's called A Cold Day Is Coming. is coming unlike anything before hard times are waiting just over the hill top only a few gonna make it through the long night and only a few will be there when the sun comes to call a storm's on the horizon and it's heading this way we've seen all the warnings we've heard it all before Save you. Go hide your head in the ground. Look away. And the bright light of reason is fading fast. And the enemy within us. Growing stronger It'll take you Without warning Like a bad dream And dark 
Sickness and fear will be your only reward up another episode of Uncle Neil's Neighborhood. Hope you enjoyed it. And please feel free to share it, comment on it, like it. Go to my website, therealneilfox.com. That's Neil with an A. And you can stream my music. You can buy my merch. I got all kinds of t-shirts there that I designed my very self. And uh, what else can you do? You can go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. That's youtube.com slash neilfox. Or go to Rumble dot com slash neil fox or what else you can become a patron if you like what i do and you want to support me help me keep doing this which i hope you do go to patreon.com slash neil fox i love you guys remember if you're feeling a little down and you want to perk yourself up go out and find somebody who needs some help helping them is the best way to help yourself see you next time 